the dinosaur of the day is Torbosaurus. So Torbosaurus was kind of the Asian counterpart of Tyrannosaurus rex, living in Asia about 70 million years ago in the late Cretaceous, just like T-Rex, except for the Asia part. <laughs> he weighed up to five tons and had about 60 teeth. Tyrannosaurus, by comparison, Tyrannosaurus rex was about six tons, so just a little bit smaller, but they looked very similar. They both had the very small two-fingered forelimbs and the big three-toed uh, hind legs. Torbosaurus was also very long, 33 to 39 feet. Still not quite as long as T-Rex, but very long. The whole Tyrannosaurus family, the Tyrannosaurids, had a few things in common that are very interesting. So when they were a young family, <laughs> before they evolved, they were not the apex predators. They were actually some of the smaller meat eaters. And Tyrannosaurids, or Tyrannosauridae, were one of the last groups to become very large in uh, the dinosaur time frame. It took until about the end, the last 20 million years of the dinosaur era to become their full size. And although they became the biggest meat eaters that, or some of the biggest meat eaters that we saw in that era, they all had proportionally large skulls and strong necks compared to other dinosaurs. So most dinosaurs had sharp teeth for cutting through meat, but the Tyrannosaurids had very large, powerful teeth and necks so they could do more ripping. And there's even a theory that Tyrannosaurus rex and maybe Torbosaurus would grab onto the frill of a Triceratops and rip its head off of its body, and then it could get at the neck meat, which is pretty horrifying. <laughs> but it shows just how powerful its neck was. And part of the theory about why its arms are so small is that its skull weighed so much that if it had large arms, it would topple over forward. So evolving smaller arms allowed its head to get bigger, and then it has that big bulky tail also to counterbalance it. So living in the late Cretaceous, Torbosaurus was one of the last dinosaurs, um, at least non-avian dinosaurs. And as we discussed, they were large, but they were not that heavy. They actually had a pretty lightweight skeleton. One interesting fact is that Torbosaurus was actually uh, more ancient than T-Rex, which suggests that the genus could have initially appeared in Asia and then they entered North America through a land bridge that connected the continents in the Cretaceous period. To go along with the theory of the Torbosaurus hunting in packs, there's an interesting phenomenon that may have existed, which is that the young Torbosaurs and other Tyrannosaurids may have been faster than the adults. So they put on a lot of weight in their version of puberty, I guess. <laughs> they became full-grown adults at around 20 years old. But before that, they were pretty lean and very fast. They had a longer shin bone than upper leg bone, which across the animal kingdom is correlated to sprinting ability. So if you have a longer lower leg, you can typically run faster than if you have a longer upper leg. And as the Tyrannosaurids grew up, the shin bone got shorter relative to the upper leg. And along with the additional weight, they may not have been able to move as quickly. And you can tell that through some of the ichnology on the, the tracks, depending on how far apart they are and how they look, you can estimate how fast they could move. So to go along with the hunting in packs, it's possible that the young faster Tyrannosaurids, or Torbosauruses in this case, would chase a, another dinosaur into either get tired or towards the larger uh, members of the group, and then with their big powerful jaws and strong neck muscles, they could take down whatever the younger ones were chasing. So I know I've seen documentaries where they show lions doing this. You'll see the the female lions chasing them around and at the end of the hunt they chase them into a ambush and they all pounce so 
could have been a similar behavior going on with the Tyrannosaurus on a much larger scale.